Hey YouTube, it's Florida Deer. I've been wanting to make this video for some time now, probably about a year. And I want to kind of go over what kind of led me to go from the Super Garden or Large Garden tractor variety of tractors, which is currently the X700 series in John Deere, to a 1 series. About a little over a year ago, I bought a 1023E, and I'll explain how that happened and why I didn't want that to happen. Well, I shouldn't say didn't want that to happen, but why I didn't expect that to happen. But once I drove it and looked at the numbers, it sort of became obvious. Um, and obviously a lot of this is based on price. Um, we'll go over price in just a minute. So a lot of the times I've heard, you know, people on the forums and stuff talk about the switch to the one series. A lot of them have said, you know, the reason why they've stayed with the with the smaller tractors. So it was a bigger jump for me to go from my 445 and 425 to a one series because their wheelbase was 50 inches, okay? So a lot of people will say, well, the, the one series is a lot bigger than the 700 series. Well, I mean, okay, I guess, maybe, not really. Um, let's look at the 758. We're gonna compare the 758 because it's the diesel four wheel drive and a 1023, 1025 is a diesel four wheel drive. So you're looking at basically the same engine, 993 cubic inch, one liter, three cylinder diesel. Okay. And eight and a half miles per hour. It is only one speed. Okay, so there's a sort of a disadvantage. Uh, same size tires as the one series. 18 by eight and a half by 10. 26 by 12 by 12. They are all purpose on there. They don't come with R4s. I suppose you maybe could get a dealership to do that or you know you could sell yours and buy R4s yourself. It doesn't go into a lot of the quote unquote tractor specifics like three point hitch, uh, rear PTO information or hydraulic information on here. But let's look at the size. I think the width is about the same. It doesn't have width listed on either one, I don't believe, but it has 55.7 inch wheelbase. The weight is about 1038. I think the breakdown was 1038 for a naked tractor is what I saw. Okay, your warranty, four years, 700 hours. Let's go to the 1023. And we can look at the 1025 as well. They're basically the same tractor. The R has some, some bells and whistles. 1023 has the same size engine, another one liter, three cylinder diesel. The 1025 is a bigger 1.3 liter engine with a little bit more horsepower. They're all rated about the same too. The 700 series has 24 horsepower. These have 22.4, 24.2, okay? Goes over hydraulic information, 6.3 total. You can see the rest. Goes over lift arms, how much it can lift. Uh, two speed, hydrostatic transmission, independent rear PTO. You can actually run the rear PTO, the mid PTO, or the rear and the mid PTO on those two machines. Let's go over here. Remember, the 700 series is supposed to be much bigger. Here we go, the wheelbase is 57.1. Remember here, it was 55.7. So we're talking about 1.4 inches, not a big difference. Now, the weight is a big difference, about 300 and some odd pounds and about 400 for the 1025. That is substantial, but it's not like the 700 series is a lightweight tractor at well over a thousand pounds and really over 1200 with a deck on it. So I don't think that that's a huge issue. Now, the 1023 and the 1025 have a ROP system, okay? But you can take off the ROP system or fold it down, okay? Um, limited category one hitch, same as the X700 series. They offer the same decks, except for the 700 series, you can get a 48 inch deck. Although it's very rare to see that size deck on a tractor that size. So realistically, most people opt for the 54 inch deck and certainly probably most people in both categories opt for the 60 inch deck. I had a 60 on the 445, a 54 on my 425 all wheel steer, and I have a 54 on my 1023 right now. 
Kind of wish I had gotten the 60, but I'm kind of happy I got the 54. I don't know. It'd be cool if I had two. Anyway, so let's get into pricing. So now you see these differences, and you would think that a 1023 would be more expensive than any of these 700 series. Okay. Starting with the 730. We'll, we'll start, we'll touch with the 730 pricing. So, help me out. 730 with a 48 inch deck. Again, who, you know, there's not that many people that buy a 40 inch deck. I, I might get some comments that somebody said, well, I did, but it's pretty rare though, okay? But that, you're looking at 11.3. So much cheaper than a 10.23. But move up to the comparable tractor of an X758 with a 54 inch deck, you're looking at 14.629. That came from the Deer website. The 16.199 comes from a local ad for a 1023 with 54 inch deck. So it seems like it's about $1,500 more expensive to buy a 1023. Well, let's consider this. The 758, no rear PTO. 1023 has a rear PTO. That's an option you can get for the 758, but it'll cost you extra. 758, no three point hitch. It's an option, it will cost you extra. 1023 already has it. And key here, the 1023 has something that X758 doesn't have, and that's a front end loader. Okay, now you can get a front end loader from CTC, but Deer does not carry one for the X700 series like they used to for the earlier 700 series, the upper 400 series, and the lower 400 series. And even back, they even had loaders even back for the, you know, John Deere 44 for the 420 and 430 back in the 80s. So, but when they went to that 700 series, the, the current one, they decided not to offer the loader. Why did they not offer the loader? Are they trying to drive Super Garden Tractor customers into the 1 series? Look at this pricing. For a, a dif difference of $1,500... Okay, you get a rear PTO, a three-point hitch, and a loader. And you get a better warranty that's six years, 2,000, I think 2,000 hour powertrain. I don't know what the bumper to bumper is, to be honest with you. Probably should since I own one, but I don't. Anyway, so for $1,500 extra dollars, you can get yourself those extra items, which are well more than $1,500. If you bought the CTC, got John Deere to option you with a rear PTO and a three-point hitch, you'd be probably looking at something like eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars to have your garden tractor do what a ten twenty-three and a ten twenty-five does. A ten twenty-five would probably be about two to twenty-five hundred dollars more expensive than a ten twenty-three. So option this way with a fifty-four inch deck, you're probably looking at eighteen plus. So this is why I chose to go with a ten twenty-three. It kind of feels weird to sit on a subcompact tractor. I mean, not anymore because it's been over a year. And they're quite a bit more capable than next 700 series. I'm not down in the 700 series. I'm just saying John Deere has kind of forced people away from the 700 series that used to buy their top line garden tractors from yesteryear. So anyways, these are my thoughts, obviously. A lot of people have strong opinions between these two segments. I think part of this is John Deere doesn't have any competitors at the X700 series level and Kubota is a hot competitor with the 1 series so they want that to do well so they offer incentives and stuff like that. I mean listen, mine was a year holdover for that same package. I got mine for $13.3. It was $10,999 for the tractor and loader by the time I added the 54 inch deck and the mulch kit it added about $2,300 in change. So I was well cheaper than a 758 with the deck, with rear PTO, three point hitch loader, and a mulch kit to boot. So, you know, again, I'm not dogging the 700 series. I'm just saying it appears that Deer is kind of saying, hey, why don't you guys look at a one series? So anyways, tell me what you think about this video. I hope you liked it. 
Hope you thought it was insightful. Um, you know, hit like if you liked it. And if you want to see more videos similar to it, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys later. Bye.